All right. Whoa, do I dislike this new Canvas system. What it does is normally I can um, bring up stuff, but I can't minimize it now. So it's very difficult to minimize. I have to minimize everything together once I share a screen. So that, that's what I'm, you can write that on my evaluation there. Somebody should re, re, redo Canvas, see how that works. Okay. Um, let me see here. All right, so what we're going to talk about, and I'm sharing the screen, you guys can see it good, is, um, so we talked about, the last one we talked about was the uh, Hamilton Standard. And now let's move on to more contemporary propellers. So, show current slides. So there we go. So let's start with Macaulay. So really, we're gonna talk mostly about either Macaulay or Hartzell. Those are the two remaining, remaining manufacturers that are left. Let me see. There we go. We can do it that way. Okay. So Macaulay. So that'd be point number three. And Macaulay props. C A U L. Macaulay. Macaulay props. And the one I want to talk about right now is. Um, I don't have a note. It's a non-counterweighted, um, non-feathering, non-feathering. So there's going to be all different kinds of flavors and stuff we're going to look at. And I'm going to show you pretty much how to put them all together. So we're talking about the prop design, prop design. Um, so this particular one is, uh, it's a popular system. It's a popular system or prop, prop used on many, used on many, boy, it really is, many different light and medium, different light, medium, medium sized GA, general aviation aircraft, well, if I write aircraft, that'd be redundant because I read GA aircraft, general aviation. Harry, what prop do you have on your airplane? You know, I had a feeling you were going to ask me, and I, I really don't know. I think it's this one. I think it's this, this one. All right, so there are two different designs. There are two different designs. That's all right. I don't remember off the top of my head what prop I have on my plane either. And I do the annual audit, so that's pretty sad. Uh, okay, so two different. There is the, what they call the threaded. The threaded. Um, and what that does, threaded, it uses a threaded retention nut. Uses a threaded retention nut. retention nut to hold the blade into the hub, to hold blade into the hub, the hub. And there now, there's the threadless. Threadless, and that's the modern design, modern design, modern design with a higher TBO time with a higher TBO time. And that uses, uses split retainers, split retainers to hold the blade in the hub, split retainers to hold the blade into the hub. Let me pull a picture back up. Okay, so there we have it. So I said right away, it's non-counterweight, non-feather. And I can tell that it's non-counterweighted because there are no counterweights visible. And I can tell that it is non-feathering because this little cap right here is very short. If it's feathering, there's a piston that moves in here. And that piston, it's gotta be much, much taller. 
And let me see here. What do I got? Um, oops, I got bringing over one. There we go. And so that's what it looks like on the inside. And I was trying to decide, I think this one is the, um, the first one I looked at, there was a threaded and this one is a thread list. Let me see if I can, yeah, I got some good pictures here. So I'll just scroll around my pictures. Um, we'll come back to that there. This is the threaded design. So see how it's got this gigantic cap right here. So this cap fits over the blade over here and it screws in and retains it. So all of the centrifugal force from the blade trying to leave is pressed up against here. And the reason why this is the old design that is not, uh, has lower TBO is because it developed crack in these threads right here and uh, was more prone to cracking. So it became the older version. What is that in the middle? Right here? Yeah, it looks like a bell. It's a phenolic block. A phenolic is, I don't want to say it's plastic. It's, kind of, it's a fibrous, so it's like more like wood, but I don't know how to describe phenolic. It's weird. It's like it's a plastic wood of some sort. And it's always, I've always found it fascinating that that's what they use right there. I mean, why not a piece of aluminum? Because it is so fragile. And if you look at all of the props that we have in our lab, which you can't, this block is broken on most of them. There's a cracked right here and broken right off. It's like, wow, that is crazy. So um, let me see. Is this a, oops. I don't know if this is a stupid question, but how do they mount these when they look all sealed up like that? Mount what? Like put it on the hub. Put, it, on, put what on the hub? Like on the front of the engine. How do you bolt it to the airplane? Yeah, is it like the studs back there? <laughs> That's or? a really good question, actually. Um, this right here, this is one of the worst possible uh, designs. And I'm glad I've got a picture of it because it's hard to explain, but let me pull that up. If you can see, that is a, a castellated nut with a roll pin through it. So you have a stud, with, then they, they put the castellated nut and then they put a pin through it. And this makes it a bolt because honestly, it's the only way you get a bolt in here, right? So now you have a bolt. And so you just tighten this up and there are uh, threads going down the bottom. You just can't see them here. They're, hang on, maybe I got let me see. How do you manage it with a pin on it? Well, it goes that's not straight. something you do as the mechanic, per se. It, would, it wouldn't be too hard putting it in. It'd be hard taking it out. Well, okay, so the hard part is you do this, but to safety this, you have to put safety wire through the middle of that roll pin, and sometimes it locks like this, and you got to get that safety wire back around here, then start your twist back in that little corner, and it's 041 safety wire, and you got to bring that twist over, and then back through here, and underneath, through, oh, that'd be the wrong way, but through this way in the back, it's really hard, but the studs are sticking out the bottom. So um, let me go back to some of the other pictures, and you can see, that one's the, that one's the real hard one. Uh, this one you can see right there, it just has nuts on the end. So studs with nuts. You just push it on the prop flange, tighten the nut on the back, call it a day. Uh, let's see. Now this represents that. You can see the engine shaft or flange right there. And so there's just a stud in there and you put a, a self-locking nut. And then back here, oh, that's the one I showed you a minute ago, right there. If I zoom in on that one, you just have studs in there with nuts. And then I believe that's the grease right there that comes with it because you, it's very critical what grease you use, the wet torque. And so you put that grease on there and then torque, just torque the nut on. Those are the easy type. I like those better. Okay, so you use a split retainers to hold the blade. Oops, that's where I was going with. Let's go back here. So we have the threaded design and the split retainers. I don't think I have a picture with the split retainers. Yep, there we do. So this one. See the split retainer right there? So that retainer goes in and it's, it's, it holds into a groove and retains it in there with all kinds of stuff, I don't know. So um, these are not something I take apart. But the split retainer, I do know that, has the higher TBO. And if I were going to buy a propeller that was a Macaulay prop, one of the things that I would demand or insist upon if I was buying it is that I want a prop with the split ring and the threadless design and not 
not the threaded design because that one's got the lower TBO and a higher chance of cracking right there, the, the threaded type. So you got those two types. All right, so because it doesn't have counterweights, it uses centrifugal, centrifugal twisting force or CTF, because I don't want it to keep writing centrifugal twisting force, and spring pressure, if it has it, and spring pressure, and spring pressure, spring pressure to drive blade, to drive the blades to low pitch or low blade angle, which is also high RPM. Therefore, what is the opposite? So there is my fixed force. The non-fixed force then is always going to be the opposite, which is governor. So it uses governor, uses governor oil pressure, oil pressure to drive, to, um, to drive blades to high pitch. which is low RPM. Okay, so how does it work? Well, the blades are installed in here and I told you it's either gonna have the thread design or the threadless design, but either which way you have a blade retention that goes in here. By the way, right here, you can see a stack of, of uh, plates this is the balance weights right there. Balance weights go there. And so I told you there's a spring back here. So we have a uh, um, centrifugal twisting force and spring pressure. And you see that spring is pushing on the piston and the piston here is all the way forward. And so um, oil comes from the governor into the inside of the propeller, uh, I'm sorry, inside of the crankshaft, through the inside of the crankshaft, through the inside there's a transfer tube in there, inside this transfer tube, out these little holes right here and fills this area right here with oil and it pushes the piston back. You can see there's an oil seal right there and it pushes the piston back. When the push, piston is pushed back with oil pressure, it's attached to this pin, which is attached to the blade. And as this gets pushed backwards, it rotates the blade into a um, oil pressure is a high blade angle. So a higher blade angle. Uh, lower RPM. And then when the governor senses an underspeed and needs to flatten those blades out, it's going to release the oil back here and the spring pressure and centrifugal twisting force will cause the piston to move forward and just drain the oil back out of the prop. So there you go. High pitch, low pitch. So um, let me see what we're going to talk about. So uh, blades Kevin, installed into the hub with the large ball bearings. Yeah. Uh, what do they have those um, spacers on on the retainer ring of the cap. Right here? Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of weird. Um, yeah, out there, I don't even know what the heck they got that spacer out there for. If it's just, I don't honestly know why, why they do that. Do not know. I'm sure they figured out some reason why it's got to be there. Because, yeah, it's not spacing anything. It's not doing any, any good. Um, I don't remember anything ever being attached to that. No bulkheads or anything. Got me on that one. Don't know. Um, okay, so we have the large ball bearings that take the um, centrifugal force, not centrifugal twisting force, but centrifugal force. And then it takes the twisting motion. The piston is connected to the blades by an actuating link. There's our actuating link. The piston moves the blade, actu blade actuating link rotates. Yep, we got that. The high, okay, this one, the high and low pitch stops, they're completely internal. So they're all set up inside of here. One of them is just simply how far this piston goes forward. But that is not something that we're allowed to change. We don't get into this. We can't change the low pitch or the high pitch stops on this particular blade. Um, okay, let me go with that and then we'll come back around to my next point on this one. All right, so let me see. 
Uh, blades are blades are installed into the hub. Installed into the hub. Into the hub and rotate on large ball bearings and rotate. That's pretty much normal for any any propeller really. Um, an internal piston, an internal piston rides inside of a cylinder. Piston rides inside inside a cylinder. The piston is connected to a blade actuating link. So the piston is connected to a blade actuating link. Blade actuating link. So what it does as the piston moves, as the piston moves, the blade actuating link rotates. The blade actuating link link rotates, rotates. I don't really like that statement. I got out of a book. I don't know if I agree with it. Um, a blade actuating pin. I think the blade actuating pin actually rotates. A blade actuating pin installed on the butt end of the blade. of the blade rides inside the actuating link. Rides inside the actuating link. So I don't know, blade, this doesn't make sense. I wrote this, but the, <laughs> the reading, I'm like, what? The blade, as piston moves, the blade actuating link, it doesn't really rotate. It, it moves back and forth. Go back and look at it. This does not rotate. It goes back and forth. If it rotates, it breaks but that's the blade actuating links right there. They don't rotate. It rotates the pin. So I'm just gonna say, we'll do this. Moves, we'll just go with that. Uh, rides on the blade actuating link. Yep, got that. Um, as the link moves, moves comma, it causes the blade to rotate. High and low pitch stops are internal, meaning non-adjustable. Now, with them being internal like that, that means that us as a mechanic can't adjust it. That is correct. All right. Uh, okay, so this is... Uh, unique to this one and somewhat of a an important point here so some some props are completely sealed completely sealed with the exception with the exception of uh, venting, of uh, venting through spiral pins, S P I R O L, spiral pins. 
And a spiral pin, um, it's really a pin that is, it's round and it's not quite closed all the way. Uh, and what you can do is you can tap it into a hole. And so it's hollow um, and it sticks tight because it's spread open and it, thus the gap and then it, it, it fits in there tightly. And so if you have these, um, these spiral pins, it, it provides a little bit of venting in there. But um, absolutely no field lubrication, no field lube. Oops. Field. Field lubrication is possible. That's why I like that one. Uh, I believe, and I'm not going to write it, so don't quote me on this, but I believe all of the newer versions, I think, use the spiral pins with some venting, and then they're greased, permanently greased. And the older style, older style, that'd be this, this one, some props, I believe the older ones are all this way, are, I could be totally wrong on that one, uh, filled with with dyed engine oil, D-Y, dyed engine oil. In other words, I'm not totally certain the uh, what corresponds to why one is filled with dye and one has venting on it, but some of them are filled with engine oil and any dye leaks, so, any, so it's filled with this engine oil. Uh, so the engine oil is nice and clean and they dye it red. And if you see any red dye at all, the prop needs to be immediately grounded uh, because that's could be just a seal leak, but more often than not, uh, people attribute it to that. And then once it's disassembled, they find out that it's cracked. So die, die leak, die leaks indicate crack, indicate a crack or failed seal. I was going to ask you what do we check on okay on inspection i was just looking at it. i'm like do i really get in should i get into all this um what else we got here we, oops we go this way so all right um no spiral pin on this one and this is the threaded so i think this one is filled with the dye um this one nope don't see any anything there. Um, go forward. Oh, there we go. Hey, <laughs> Woo glad I was right about that one. So um, that's the sticker that's on there. And so uh, it's kind of blurry. I think that's a threaded design, but you can see right there some of the red dye coming out. And they put these stickers on there. I tell you, these prop manufacturers are really good about placarding stickers. Uh, they put a lot of uh, very, very important stickers on props. So if I were going to work on a prop, uh, even doing inspections or anything, the very first thing I do is read all the stickers on these constant speed props because they put a lot of good stuff on there. Like this hub is internally lubricated with red dyed engine oil, which is independent of engine lubricating system. And if you get any oil leaking out, well, you got a major problem. Uh, okay, let me go back. So we go back to the beginning. Where was I? Okay, started there. Um, I don't see any pins on that one. No. Uh, blade actuating links. Yeah, they don't rotate. I don't know what that was all about. Um, cylinder. I know your spacer. So high pitch stop spacer. They put it in here. And what that does is when this piston comes back, it's going to hit that spacer and that stops it. At, um, that keeps it from how far it's going to go back. And then of course you can see here your low pitch stop spacer. So now you know, just based upon this, that the only way you're gonna change the, the pitch stops is by removing it, taking your part and putting in different spacers and you're not gonna do that. So in some ways this prop is, is really easy to maintain. And uh, I do like them for a couple of reasons. One, they're, you don't have to worry about pitch stops. You adjust everything at the governor end. And the only thing you can really, the only thing you can adjust on the governor end is you make sure you have full travel with your cable 
and then you can adjust your um, high RPM stop, which would be your low pitch stop. So you can adjust your low pitch stop on the governor. That's pretty much it. Uh, other than that, and then you, of course, you always inspect it for any sort of oil leaks. I'm going to show you a little video where you inspect the play in the blades to make sure the blades don't have much play fore and aft, up and down inside of the hub. Uh, let me see, we got that. Covered all that. Can't really see the stops. There'll be one right about in there. Nope, oh, got the lube. Okay. Covered all that. Let's see what else we got. Um, okay, we'll just continue on with what I got here. A, B. So the governor. The governor. It's um, this one. I must have kept the same as the Hamilton standard, but works in the opposite manner. So it's just, it's a governor. We've covered the governors. So governor's a governor and a governor. They make Hamilton standards. And they've got um, Macaulay governors, and they all work pretty much the same way. It's just, it's kind of like the difference between um, a Bendix Magneto and a Slick Magneto. It's like once you understand it, there's just some nuances inside of how they do it, but it's the same, same thing. So um, I'm just going to make this easier to say. I'll just put oil pressure. Oil pressure is released. Is released is released to decrease blade angle. And oil pressure to prop, to prop, to increase blade angle. And I may or may not continue writing that because I think once once you get it, I don't have to write it each time. So um, set up and adjustments, set up and adjustment. Always, always, always remember this is an oil seal between this and the crankshaft. Let's see if this picture has it. So you have the crankshaft, eh, I don't have a good picture. So it, you have the crankshaft, uh, always has a pilot on it, a little sticking out. And then the prop is gonna have to fit over this. And there's gonna be an O-ring inside of the prop that's gonna go along there. And so you wanna make sure your O-ring is, is, and then the prop is gonna be here with a little O-ring and then out. So you wanna make sure your O-ring is well lubricated. So lubricate lubricate o-ring lubricate the o-ring before installing and you can just use engine oil unless they specify something else um, use proper torque and safety some of these aren't safety they just use um, self-locking nuts makes your day a lot nicer some of them are some of the worst safety. It's the worst safety job you'll ever have. And then once you get it all put together, you get the prop installed and you're going to test run it. You're going to run it through. Um, you're going to cycle what I call cycling the prop, which is basically you run it up. You run it up to high RPM and then you take the uh, blue knob and you're going to pull it back. And really the way you should do it is pull it back just until you hear the props start to engage. You know, you hear it. It's just an, I can't even describe what the sound is like, um, but it's like you're chopping up ice or something. It's just, it's hilarious and, and funny um, just how noisy a prop gets when you're shifting it. And as soon as it starts to move, I go right back into high, high RPM because it really brings your manifold pressure down. And I'll do this with you guys uh, when we make it back to class. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to run one of these and exercise the prop. We're going to use the engine. We're going to take it out. And we'll pull back the prop and watch the manifold pressure change and do all this kind of stuff. It's kind of fun. Um, of course, I did it with you with um, the, the uh, flight simulator. And I can do it again, too, if you guys want. Um, and then, so you get it all put together, and you're going to adjust and run hey, it. Kevin? Yeah? I thought you couldn't use self-locking nuts on a part that rotated. Um, okay. Love that. Subject to rotation, which means that the part 
that that's such a hard one to actually explain. Um, let's see, where am I? Did not do what I wanted it to do. Okay, we'll go with this one. What that means is this piece right here is rotating relative to this piece right here. If the nuts are all going around, but the thing they're touching doesn't rotate under them, well, I can't really explain that one well, then, then you're fine. So I don't know, you've got something that's twisting and the nut here, you can't have it like that because that's what it means by subject to rotation. Because oh. it can grab the nut and start spinning the nut. Okay, that makes more sense. But if it's locked and going around like this, that's not subject to rotation. Yeah, if they're in unison, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, there you go, unison. I've never never been able to really explain that one well. Um, adjust high RPM, RPM stop out on the governor. Stop screw to make sure you don't go over red line. Now, when I say that, uh, be aware that that's in the chocks red line. And so you're gonna set it up uh, unless the manual says otherwise, so that when you go to static RPM, it goes right up to red line. But the thing that you have to be careful of uh, as a pilot or somebody, if you're gonna run it down the runway, which you shouldn't, is that once you release the brakes and you change the angle of attack of the wind hitting the blade, if you do it fast enough and the governor doesn't react fast enough, you will overspeed the engine. So you gotta, just gotta be careful of that. Um, let's see, D, troubleshooting. Troubleshooting. All right, so any loss of oil pressure, so remember this, loss of oil pressure, loss of oil pressure will result um, in low blade angle, in a low blade angle. So if your owner pilot doesn't put enough oil in the engine and they run out of oil, it's gonna go to a low, blow, low blade angle before the engine seizes. Um, let's see. I'm gonna just put this inspect. Inspect for oil leaks. Um, and I did write this one in here. Well, I'll just I'll put it in here. What the heck? So threaded design. Threaded design um, has balance weights. Has balance weights. Weights on blade retention nuts. On blade retention. The threadless design has balance weights on the, or around cylinder balance weights. I, I'll say around cylinder, around. Which is where uh, that spacer thing was that you asked me about. It was right, at, it'll, they'll attach them right around there. Yeah, here's a good picture. So right there, you can see some balance weights right there around the cylinder. What else, let me see. Balance weights here because it's threaded. There we are. All right, so that's that's your Macaulay. Um, I would say probably, uh, let's, um, yeah, Macaulay, non-counterweighted, non-feathering. Now I should probably mention at some point, which I'll mention it now, I'm gonna bring up this chart. And I, I, there was a mistake in one of these charts and I, I can't remember, so I have to make sure that I don't mess up and, uh, and I will if I correct it because I've changed some slides here. But anyway, so as we go, I'm gonna pull up each prop and I'm gonna throw it up here and uh, we're gonna take a look and make sure everything's right. So, um, propeller, what is it? Camel, Hamilton Standard, counterweighted. Does it have counterweights? Yes, it does. What moves the prop to low pitch? Oil pressure. What moves the prop to high pitch? Counterweights and spring pressure. Um, what happens if you increase the speed or spring pressure? Um, if you do that, it's going to go in under speed, which is oil to prop to decrease pitch. 
um, what happens here under speed, drain oil to decrease pitch. So it's always going to be increased speed or spring pressure as an under speed and decrease, I mean, over speed. And really, this is just a, a repeat of what we have over here, what moves it to high, what moves it to low. So I have oil pressure, um, oil pressure, counterweights, drains oil. So and lets the counterweights do its job. So now we just cover the Macaulay counterweight, counterweights, no. Uh, and this is the Macaulay non-counterweighted. Um, centrifugal twisting force and spring pressure, move it to low pressure, oil to high, and we just kind of covered that. So every time we get through a prop, we're just gonna throw this up on there. All right, now, um, should I do it now? Well, I'll just let you know. So I've talked a lot about, you know, uh, and keep mentioning feathering versus non-feathering. So, and I've told you that a prop that is a feathering prop puts the blades directly into the relative wind coming forward when the engine is not moving. So they're going to, you know, if they line them up horizontally, they just look like two little wings right there. All right, give it a, give it a rest, Kevin. Um, I know it's break time. So the reason why you put blades into feather is when the engine dies and you put the engine away, you don't want the propeller windmilling for two reasons. One, it will damage, the, if the engine's already damaged, it's going to make it even worse. Uh, if there's no oil pressure, you're going to be still be running the engine, even though there's no fuel to it. It's going to be rotating internally with no oil, and that would damage even worse. You don't want that. And two, the drag is tremendous. Uh, I've been told that the drag on a windmilling propeller is equal to the entire drag of the aircraft. I don't know how true that is because I think it would depend on what aircraft it is. But all right, so we better go on a break here before Kevin has a has some sort of conniption fit here. So sorry, but I gotta use the restroom. That's why. Sorry, Kev. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're good. <laughs> Can you go back to the notes?